Here we are again. We made it. Another show. Woo. And you know what? This time, we're, we're on assignment. That's on right. On the road. Oh, on yeah. the road. We finally got out of Missouri. That's right. Here we are. This is Talking Winter with Swinter. Got uh, myself, Ken Bogeman here. Got Brent Reeder here. And, uh, well, wait, wait. We got to wait for it. Reaver. Reaver. <laughs> God, it's so good. It's so it, the Reaver is good. Molly, just can't believe this is happening. <laughs> Special guest star. <laughs> That's right. So, so we we need we actually we need a moment of silence. Zach Frame is not with us. He couldn't he, temporarily. Uh, he is fine. He could he couldn't make the trip. He's still alive. <laughs> he yeah, he's still alive. He he uh, he was not able to make the trip. Uh, so he's not here. So we got a just a quick a quick moment of silence for Zach. Oh, you could have planned that a little better. Well, yeah, but, I mean it was quiet, but you can't just have dead air. You got to have something going. So it was a, it was a peaceful, serene cricket. Are okay. we going to cheers and yes. Zach? Yes, cheers for Zach, who would normally be drinking water. None of us are drinking water at this point, which is just fine. Cheers. Here we are. Cheers. Cheers, 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 everybody. Sip, sip. Dead, dead, dead space. Huh? Dead sound. No, it's good. It's good. We just sipped. No, we are talking winter with Swinner. We are um, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Beautiful downtown Milwaukee, which actually this evening was gorgeous. We were doing a little walk around earlier. It was great. Uh, we are here for the 25th annual Snow and Ice Management Association Symposium. It's been fantastic. Kind um, of a big deal. It is kind of a big deal. It's the uh, uh, the industry's largest uh, gathering of snow nerds and, uh, where everybody gets together and talks about, well, snow stuff. So we... Um, We've been attending uh, gosh, seminars, and there was keynote speakers, and there were other speakers, and you know, education and knowledge that we're going to try to convey some of that today. Um, no promises that it's going to be tremendously educational, but this is going to be a fun conversation, right, Molly? It's going to be awesome, right? Yeah. So for those <laughs> right, wondering who, who Molly is, Molly is the one and only Molly Reader, Aww. wife of the infamous Brent Reader. I made it to infamous <laughs> level. Infamous. In famous. In famous. That's right. That's the one. That sounds less important. And and the non Molly other gal that you just heard was my lovely bride Nicole, Aww. who is here as well. And uh, yeah, and so we've been attending seminars and learning stuff. We're going to try to share some of that. So we're. Uh, what do you think? I mean, like, should we just jump right in, or do we want to just talk about nonsense for a little bit? I think uh, jumping right in on this would be just fine. Yeah. It's not a boring topic. It's not insurance. No, 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 no. I mean, the you got to start with the keynote speaker. I mean. well, 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 what we need to start with was the uh, they announced that August 8th and 9th of this year is going to be the leadership forum down in Austin, Texas. Fair. It's going to be really cool. So, you know, you got I mean, you got to get the whole, you know, got to, I mean, you got to get that, the announcements out of the way, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, kind of yeah, how yeah. they acted about it, too. <laughs> Fair enough. Yep. And then next year, uh, we'll be in Hartford, Connecticut for the symposium, June 13th through the 16th. So, you know, mark your calendars, everybody, because I know if you're listening, you are like you are you like you're probably here. here. You're like all of our listeners are probably here. I hope so. I mean, both of you guys are it, here, I'm sure. Yeah. And, and thank you. And they need to come say hi. <laughs> right. 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 We may or may not be in on the seventh floor at the Hilton. Just start knocking on doors. Make a, make a scene. You'll find us. It'll be a good time. Not hard to find us. No, 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 not at all. So we keep you, getting stuck outside of rooms because the keys don't work. So Well, it's because they got it on the damn phone. Of course, nothing's going to work if you use a phone app to open your door yeah technology yeah old school boy shut up <laughs> when they went to key cards that was a little tough for him he, right. he, he's the actual key <laughs> yep. you have to put it around his neck so he doesn't lose it that's right that's right that's right then you can lean down and do you know, put the, you know unlock the door and you know come on through it's awesome awesome that's the best way to do it right exactly okay how am i supposed to drink if you guys stop talking when i pick up my cup that's rough that's fair yeah yeah well, today was day one of SIMA, which sure was. was a pretty lengthy day. Yep. Trade yep. show starts tomorrow, but today yep. was all about learning and networking. Yep. Well, and juggling and unicycle riding. Well, that was that was learning. Yeah. That's you right. Learned how That's to juggle, right? That was Dan yeah. Thurman. Yes, it was. Thurman. Oh, you know what? I'm picking out a Thurman for you. <laughs> not an ordinary Thurman for you. Nothing? No. I get it. You've I not seen the jerk? No why idea. are you not surprised? What? No oh. idea. It's from it's from Good a movie. That, the jerk Navin Johnson was picking out a thermos, but in this case, it's Dan Thurman. Oh, 
Still didn't get it. Yeah, there's some old guys that are that are listening. Like, okay, now I can relate to this cat. It's awesome. And all the people who were listening just turned it off. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 maybe not, but he had he had he did have some pretty good points. So one of the things that he that he started with was uh, making a life list. So you know, even no matter what your age is, you know, make a list of things you want to accomplish in your life, right? So what what are things you want to do? Do you want to you, do you want to go skydiving? Do you want to fly a plane? Do you want to you know go snow skiing? Do you want to write a book? Do you is this a do, bucket list? Yeah, it's a bucket list. You know, put, put mixture of adventure and achievement. But I think you're not supposed to wait until you're about to die to do it. Yes, that was the whole point. And you keep adding to it as well. Yes. Make the list more better. We miss you, Zach. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's not, it's not, you know, and then uh, he, he kind of went into, you know, uh, a, a bunch of tips on uh, his whole topic was, uh, was about balance. What was it? It was off balance on purpose yes. was his thing, was what he called it. Off balance, but on purpose. And so how to be... You know, um, not, you know, not, not needing everything to be perfect all the time. Uh, in fact, be off balance on purpose, which is, you know, off balance on purpose. That's how you keep moving forward. Dan Thurman. Ooh, don't forget about the peacock feathers. There were peacock feathers. They were awesome. Molly's favorite part. What, 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 what? Okay, do you have like a weird thing with peacock feathers? <laughs> no, I just like object lessons. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I can relate to them better. There you go. That's awesome. Man, your mic is I just, super hot. I Which just, one are you? Wait, talk again. Hello? Okay, you're three. I got to turn that down. Just, okay, there you go. All right, now you're good. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks. Yeah, see? Now, now we're all at the same level. We balanced the peacock feathers on our hands. That's right. It was cool. It was, it, yeah. You know what? I think that's one of those then, things that doesn't work good on radio. Uh, they can imagine a giant peacock feather. It's like four feet tall. Okay, maybe not like two. I don't know. You know, I don't know how many people can imagine a singular peacock feather. It was sparse. Did not expect it to be so sparse. But the lesson was. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we need her more often. She's actually trying to keep right. us on point. Right. Like, okay, seriously, guys, come on. What was the lesson? It was where to keep your focus. I thought you were going to say where to keep your feathers. <laughs> no. Near your focus. Yeah. Oh, focus on feathers. And where are, we, where are we focusing? To always be looking forward, always be looking up. Because if you look at your hand. Not at the obvious, at your hand. At what's at hand. Ooh. Or right, or right in front of you. Right, and what's right in front of you? I love it, love it. And the, and you know, and the another lesson that he had was was how it it, it it doesn't matter what you do in life. What matters is how you do it. So that was you know, and, and which tied to the feather because when you got that feather balanced on your hand, right? It doesn't matter you know what you're doing. It's how you do it. Right. Yeah. The one thing I like that he said is like. He referenced, you know, an eighth grader who's, you know, doing really good in school, but he's not performing at his, uh, the top of his ability or, or um, full yeah, potential at his full potential. But his point was, well, you never really reach your full potential because you're always learning and growing and therefore your full potential keeps moving ahead of you. Can you see my notes? Like that was the next thing I had written down. I'm Boom. just that good, man. Wow. Yeah. Synergy. We're gonna, you know what? Someday we're going to finish each other's sandwiches. Nice. Nicole got it. I just wasn't going to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Wait, I'm jumping back on to say I knew that reference. <laughs> <laughs> that was Aladdin, right? Oh. oh. He did, no, my guy made an Aladdin reference. You guys weren't there. Oh. What What guy? My guy. Mm-hmm. Nice. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, so that was so, so that was Dan Thurman. He was the uh, the keynote. Talked for, like, what an hour and forty five minutes or something like that. It was it was lengthy. Yeah, we summed it up in nine. Brevity well, was not one of his points. We can't show how we how he juggled. We can't show how he did acrobats on the stage. We can't show how he did a unicycle across the whole facility. He That's balanced true. on the podium on his hands. Oh, that was which was impressive. That and was it, impressive. Yeah, and apparently he's like fifty four years old, so that made that even even more impressive. Yeah, because I can't do it, and I'm you, nowhere near that. You know what else? Kind of, kind of. I, I don't want to say it bothered me, but I was curious. When he was juggling, right, he would drop he would drop the balls that he was juggling occasionally, which was which was refreshing, you know, to see that you know he wasn't perfect, which is good. But mm-hmm. when he would drop the juggling balls, they would just hit the boom and yeah. not move, like well, they're they not solid. And roll. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of I don't know. I mean, well, that was the point, though. Is you learn to juggle not by being perfect right away, but by dropping those balls and picking them back up. Oh, you think that was intentional? Maybe. 
You realize that we're oh. talking about balls and we're keeping it pretty clean. I'm just Good saying. Good boy. I'm proud of you. <laughs> he did juggle knives afterward. He did. It's true. <laughs> so it could have been on purpose. Maybe that's where he got the balls from. Jeez. There you go. <laughs> did I? <laughs> Molly will never talk on this again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna we'll, we'll draw the line right there. That's that, that that's line for today. Cool. Yeah, for today. So, so yeah. So keynote keynote was good. Dan Thurman. Yeah, Thurman. he was a good speaker. A lot of times those motivational speakers are, I don't even know if that's what I'd call them, but uh, they can just come off super cheesy. And, yeah, and he he really didn't. No, he did a good job. Yeah. And he did like acrobat stuff too. He did flips and tumbles and yeah, yeah. it was cool. Dan Thurman. Thurman. You're going to say that like six more times. Dan Thurman, 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 Dan Thurman. Well done. Was that six? I don't know. You did it right. I don't care. Man. Well, I did my unique New Yorks right before we got started. Nothing? I didn't really. What are you drinking? What do you got, Nicole? What are you doing? That looks like water. I have. No, this is Ryan Reynolds' nourishing yumminess aviation gin. And Sprite. Delicious. I don't know about the and Sprite part. They should move that gin to where you can only buy it in an airports i think they'd sell a lot less of it yeah but you could charge more and it'd be exclusive for people flying depends on the airport true yeah it's fair so fargo Fargo, north dakota not a good (laughs) potentially not a good place for that potentially so yeah all right so you know back to simon right what the oh, hell yeah. was in Fargo? Is there anything in Fargo? I've never been there. Uh, there's a good mo- show. A about good movie. It. I've never seen the yeah. show, but I hear it's good. Is that the one where like they're like shoving people in limb chippers or something? The movie. Uh, pe- people die. People die. Yeah, and there's a lot of snow. Oh well, and we like snow. And don't you know? Don't you oh, know? oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can't forget that. Oh yeah, don't you know? <laughs> oh yeah, North Dakota's. <laughs> yeah. All right, nice, nice. So, nice. And there goes all of our northern market. <laughs> no, they're like it's about time you do a shout them. out. They're just happy to be noticed. Right. Oh. Yeah, actually, you know, we have listenership all over the, the the planet at this point. Like, no kidding. Uh, I was, was it in Russia? Something, something in Russia? There, yeah. There's there's several the uh, Federation of Russia or something. Like the that. Russian Federation, yeah, something like that. Wait, that's bad, right? We can't. That's not okay right now. No, uh, no, I didn't say that was good. I just okay. said that they're listening. Oh, good. Well, and yeah, you know, I mean, the people, people the great. people are yeah. probably fine. That's true. Yeah. Well, they're probably mostly fine. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. fine. I will just watch the news in the morning. They'll tell us what to think. It'll exactly. Be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Keep your it's opinions to yourself. <laughs> right. 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 So, so then after the keynote, we broke into into groups, right, and went and saw stuff. I uh, I went to a I went to a a session on ethics, put on by Jim Lindell. You needed that. Well, <laughs> I was curious, man. Because okay, so here's the thing. So I'm looking through all the things, and or, like, or feeling guilty, one of the two. No, I couldn't. I couldn't not think. Of what is it, Billy Madison, when he says, <laughs> "And I choose business ethics," and then the the skinny scrawny guy gets all <laughs> flustered and can't talk and nothing. Billy I at least Man. know the movie. I just don't know that scene. Okay, fair enough. It was, it was a good, it was a good one. That's why I picked it. No, it was no? no. It wasn't that movie. No, it wasn't movie. It's not a good one. It's not a good movie. Yeah. Oh, okay. What? The, it's a well known movie though. Well, you've got no taste. You married that's me. True. That's true. I mean, seriously, that's rough. Just saying. So, so yeah. So, okay. So, I did, I did the ethics one. Nicole, where'd you go? I mean, it was today. Yeah, but I didn't really have a topic. They just told us to start talking about goals. So, I don't, I don't remember. Did you just, like, start walking into rooms and look for people? Or? I did. I just wandered. That's nice. I think I don't even think I went into an actual one. I just went to a room, and there was nobody in there, and I started talking to people. <laughs> <laughs> it, was this, it was this room off the alley just outside the hotel. <laughs> A bunch of people hanging out, dimly lit trench coats. Jeez. <laughs> it's fine. Nothing? I, I can't. Oh, no, you can. It's fine. No, I can't. It's internet I, radio, I man. went too far. Okay. Too, too far, too quick. That would have been fun. <laughs> Molly's like, I'm not even telling y'all where I went. <laughs> Molly, was, Molly was straight up cooking drugs and selling people. <laughs> not chance to get on defend herself. I'm glad we're in Milwaukee. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Well, you wouldn't come back from that if we're still in St. Louis. Yeah. From what? Walking in any alley. Oh, well, that's true. That's yeah. Mm-hmm, fair. You know what? This town is really clean too. It is. Like, like, like we're downtown and it's clean. And pretty. Yeah. And decorative. Props to the people in Milwaukee, man. This is good. Mm. And other than the weather yesterday, the weather was great today. Yeah, that's true. Walking that's very back true. from the safe house. Oh, it's not the safe house. Oh, it's sorry. just safe house, and it's one word. That's why you can't find it on Google. Got to ring that up again, do you? I didn't think we were supposed to talk about that. 
Uh, well, we didn't tell them where it's it is. A secret. Yeah. I mean, if you're coming to Milwaukee and you need a safe house, you got to just find safe house and go there. They'll take care of you. Mm. Probably serve you some food. You will not regret it. Nope. It was delicious. And yes, you can take your family. Yes, for sure. It is not a dark room in the middle of nowhere. That's right. I mean, you do kind of enter off an alley, though. It's kind of neat. But it's a safe alley, and it's a clean alley, which doesn't make sense. Once again. Right. It's awesome. You know, you know what, ladies? You know what you're about to experience? Is it time? It's time. This is your first commercial break. Commercial now, break. now, Molly, you get to pick one, two, or three. Three. All right, here we go. Fed up with your current software solution? Field Routes is the cloud-based software technology you need to level up your lawn care business. From routing to scheduling, collections, marketing, reporting, and more. It's the all-in-one solution that automates, not complicates. Field Routes helps lawn care companies simplify, scale, and grow. Schedule your free demo today by visiting fieldroutes.com. That's fieldroutes.com. You're listening to Turfs Up Radio, the only radio station of its kind dedicated to the green industry. Turfs Up Radio, your industry, your station. Hey everybody, Wayne Vols, the Prophet, your host of Profit Time here on Turfs Up Radio. If you listen to my show, you know I'm all about profit. As an industry, profit is something we fail to meet most of the time. If you're working hard but not seeing the results that you deserve, Profits Unlimited is here to help. We offer processes and systems designed specifically to make your company more successful, more profitable, and certainly more efficient. When you're ready to take your company to the next level, reach out to me at Profits Are us.com that's profits a r e u s.com and don't forget to turn into profit time every monday wednesday and friday at 10 a.m are you a military family with a spouse on deployment away from home did you know that nonprofit project evergreen has thousands of volunteers across the country ready to help military families with lawn landscape and snow removal services we call it green care and snow care for troops If you are a military family and would like to receive this free service, or if you'd like to volunteer to help, visit projectevergreen.org. Project Evergreen, creating a greener, healthier, cooler earth, one yard at a time. One yard at a time. That that lady has like the kindest, gentlest voice of any kind, gentle voices. I need her to answer phones for me. I mean, I'm sure you could call her. Probably. Be like, hey, you know, like if you're in like you're, you're all anxious and nervous and freaked out about stuff, you'd be like, hey, Sally, I need you to just talk to me about something. Like you just read me the back of the shampoo bottle. It'd be fine. She would be good for people who are calling to complain about something. Just give them to her. But by the time they've <laughs> gotten right. through talking to her, they don't even know what the problem was. <laughs> They're just she, like, oh, that was so lovely. She'd be like, you know, ice is really just not that. It's we understand and we feel your pain, and you know, it's it's we're a kinder, gentler snow removal, and it's going to be okay for you. His leg's broke. You want to feel his pain? <laughs> like, I mean, you want to, like, touch his leg? Or it's kind of creepy. <laughs> what? N- nothing? No. That's Snack not and a, chats. That's not what I meant. And Snack yes, and Nicole's chats. Right. Snack and chats. Okay. So, yeah. So, we did seminars. And, uh, and, and you know, and I, actually, I've got some stuff. I, I've got some stuff that I wrote down for mine that was uh, on the ethics one that I, that I, I do want to sh- I want to share with the peeps, you know, that there was something that um, they said that the... Uh, um, they talked a lot about the difference between ethics versus integrity, right? Mm. So do you guys know what the difference is between ethics and integrity? First off, did he uh, like define what ethics is? Well, no, I mean, no, he's not as good as cheaty. <laughs> I mean, if he was cheaty, he probably could have defined that. You probably don't know. Do you know what cheaty is? <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> <Do> you, <geez. laughs> well, that's a great show. That's a great show. That's a good show. The good place. Just assume we don't know any cultural difference. <laughs> it's like it's, it's our like movie you, or show. It's like you guys have got like four kids or something and keep you busy all the time. Bizarre. I don't know what you talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, he didn't necessarily specifically define ethics, right? But he did talk about the difference between ethics and integrity, which I thought was kind of interesting because the w- what he had said was that the difference between ethics and integrity are when that you're you you're operating ethically when you make decisions that when nobody's Based watching, no, when nobody's watching and you still do the right thing, that's ethical. You're you're trying to um, you, you you're using integrity. You're being integrious. How the hell do you say that? I've never heard that word. Having integrity. Having integrity. Sure. Showing integrity. I don't know. 
You're the, Nicole, yeah. you're, you're the most educated one here, I think. I don't know. I don't know. Probably. Well, you're you did, smarter you than I am. You didn't Aww. finish the sentence, so we don't know the context. Okay, right. that's fine. So you're you're being integrated a bull. But in, <laughs> integrated this? Did, yeah, Just keep moving. You and Molly, people, people listen. This is fine. This is entertaining, okay? <laughs> so it's fine. Just relax over there. <clears throat> so, yeah, you have integrity when, when if you only do the right thing when people are watching. Ah, you're what? doing that because you're trying, you want to project the, the appearance of integrity. Wait, so I would have fl- flipped that. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's, that's kind of what a lot of the people thought too. And we just, and we kind of. They defined that at the kids' school. At our kids' school, they talk about integrity, about doing the right thing when no one is looking. Yeah. I think he read his notes wrong. No, I didn't read any of his notes. I wrote down my own notes. I mean, I could have written it down wrong. He read his <laughs> notes wrong. Oh, that makes sense. I am not talking about you. Maybe. Well, and he also did say that the root cause of all unethical behavior is selfishness. I agree. Well, that's probably almost probably completely true. Yeah. yeah it's agree. legit. One. I like that. Yeah. You know, so. And not necessarily money driven, just selfish. Right. Right. Yep. And so, so in, you know, in business, you know, you need to be, you know, watching out for those who are unethical and because they're out there. Right. And so he had, uh, he had Waffum, 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 W I I F M. With him? With him, with him. What are we talking about here? It's what's in it for me. Ah. Is oh. something that you can, and, and he, but he turned it into an acronym that you can't really pronounce well. Ooh, speak, you know what? We talked about, you know, boat being an acronym. Boat. Yeah, that, that was that's the a boat. great topic to go into. Yeah, I should just, yeah, you're right. The buoyancy operated a Sometimes transport. knowledge is Fine. painful, and, and yeah, that was painful. <laughs> that was bad. That's fair. Fair. So yeah, so 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 when you're when you're negotiating contracts or you're 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 working with somebody, you have to think about what's in it for me and what's in it for them. That's the woof woof t- with them. Yeah, and woof t- oh with w i i f m and w i i f t. I think you can move on. Yeah, you're probably right. Was that bad radio just then? Yes, <laughs> it, okay. was, it was hurting my ears. <laughs> That's fine. It's fine. Man, I wrote down a lot of stuff at that one, and, and now that I'm kind of scrolling through my notes, it's all really boring. Ooh, okay, no, we did get to something that might be relevant. So he talked about the difference between helicopter parents, right? You guys, you know what helicopter parents are? I am aware of it. Okay. Are you familiar with lawnmower parents? Ooh. Ah. Well, it's like, okay, now, now this is worth it. Yeah. Now. I am picturing I've some very awful term. things. Okay, okay, here we go. Yes, like ER visits. What? <laughs> you just, just like you throw your kid under a lawnmower? Oh, ow. chucked him out, threw him out of the house. I don't know. No, Dang. no, no. So, so the the helicopter parent is a parent that swoops in like a helicopter, right, and just kind of takes over and makes sure that you know that, that everything's okay. Well, so you know, hovers. hovers, hovers. They're right there, right. So they're right there. They're ready, and then if anything goes awry, they jump right in, right. Right. The lawnmower parent is the one that gets out there in front of the kid and make sure the kid never has any challenges. Oh, that's bad. Oh. Okay, so so if oh. the so if the kid, you know, so so you know, if the kid wants to, you know, doesn't feel comfortable doing something, the parent goes over and makes sure the kid doesn't have to do it. Or the parent goes in and and shows up at a job interview for the kid and says, "Hey, you're going to hire my kid, right?" Here's why, blah, 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 blah. Or the, or the parent, or like the, was it Lori Laughlin that was, you know, paying off, mm-hmm. you know, uh, educators to get their kids the, in the school. college or, scam. It wasn't just her. That was a big, that was yeah. a big ordeal. Yeah. You know, so the, you know, that that is now it's happening so frequently that parents are jumping in there ahead of time and, and paving the way for their kids to make it easy for them. Never letting the kid fail or gain uh-huh. confidence. Exactly right. And so, you know, so he was talking about how employers are, are now having to deal with that because these, you know, because the workforce is you've got people coming into the workforce that just automatically think that they should just be able to, like, they shouldn't have to work. It's like, why am I having to work hard? Or why am I having to prove myself? Or why am I having to ask my boss for permission to do something? Or, you know, things like that that are just, that are just happening when, because the kids never had to deal with that before, right? They're just, because mom and dad have always jumped in there and been lawnmower parents and just done everything for them. Look at that knowledge bomb. Boom. So don't lawnmower parent your kids. How does that relate to companies? Oh, just did you miss everything I just no, said? No, I meant <laughs> like are those headphones on? <laughs> Can you hear? <laughs> Hello. Okay. Tap- so later when I was listening, he was just, talking about helicopter parent, and he turned it into helicopter businesses, and that's where my brain went for a second. So just wait, you were there? 
No. Or you're listening to me. No. I knew that. I, I knew you had a separate conversation in a different room that I was in. Oh. Yes. And so I tuned you out for a Wait, second. Wait, with this gym guy? You met him in a different room? Was he in the dark room? He was my guy. You met Jim in a dark room, didn't you? <laughs> Man, if, he's, if he ever gets his hands in, he's like, who the hell are these people? <laughs> I mean, know these people and this is happening. I'm sorry. That's fine. <laughs> so yeah, so we did that and then, yeah. Excellent. Just, you didn't really meet Jim, right? Jim who? Collins? Nice. No, Jim Collins. You know what? If you met Jim Collins, that'd be kind of cool. That'd be cool. Yeah, you could go in a dark room with Jim Collins. That'd be fine. Move it on. Nothing? You nah, you uh, got me. Oh, Good to great. You don't know who Jim Collins is? Good to great, built to last, on the money fall. Yeah. Wow, that must be really old. Three books. <sighs> They're books. They're very good oh. books. Oh. No, the other audio books as well. Well, I, yeah, I can only do audio books. That's all I do nowadays. It's kind of sad. Yeah, that's fine. It's good. We, she, Molly bought me the book one day. I didn't have time to read it, so then we got the audio book of it. I never actually opened the books. But I've read That's them all. Okay. But I've read them all. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you got to do, right? Exactly. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. So, yeah. So, we went from, uh, yeah. So, I went from, from there to uh, over to talk to, well, there was the snack and chat lunch, right? Yes, sir. Which, um, which you know, okay. Lunch so, was amazing, by the way. It was, it was really good. good. You know, I thought I thought breakfast was tasty. Yeah, breakfast mm-hmm. was excellent. breakfast was impressive. The food so far is so <laughs> the food so far has been pretty tasty. Mm. Yeah, a lot of it and tasty and flavorful. What did you did you have the fish and chips I had for lunch? Ah or did you have the fish. chicken? I had ah chicken. Both. Yes. Nice. And you mean you didn't do salads. that too? Oh no no no! I had multiple of both. <laughs> 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 but did you have the strawberry shortcake dessert? I did not have the strawberry shortcake dessert. I, I did. did, however, have the strawberry whatever f- thing, tart, whatever the hell it was for breakfast. It was, that, 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 that was, was excellent as well. Yeah. It was that was too- a mean joke they did on that strawberry treat, though, with that candy on top. What? There was this red rock candy on it. I didn't see that. Well, Was it would- Sammy Hagar? No. <laughs> okay. Hey, I know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> I get that reference. <laughs> On, on a treat like that, you would expect everything to be sweet. Yeah. The candy was super sour. Oh, maybe it wasn't candy. Well, uh, it wasn't ever, on mine. I, everyone else ate it. Oh, okay. Did you get it out of a dark room in the corner? <laughs> With Jim. <laughs> With Jim? Was Jim handing out poison <laughs> sweet tarts in a dark well, room in the corner? I'm still here, so I'm going to say no. You're good. Well, no blackout know. time. All good? Yet. Night's uh, early. Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> it's only it's only 9.04, and we've got seven more podcasts to record tonight. Tomorrow's going to be fun. Yeah. That's yeah, fine. We're going to pull an all-nighter. So, Ken, which snack and chat table did you go to? Uh, I went to the snack and chat table. And see, now, wait to bring it back. Wait to bring it back. I went to the snack and chat table for uh, slip and fall litigation. Oh, fascinating. It's everybody's favorite topic. Man. Mine was business processes. What was the average age of everyone at that table? Uh, that meant to be there or that didn't have anywhere else to sit and so they sat down. <laughs> yeah, exclude the house. <laughs> okay, got it, because there was one of those. Uh, and then there was, uh, uh, there were one, two, three, four, five of us at the table and they were all probably, I would say average age 35. Really? Yeah. I'm surprised. So there was, um, yeah, yeah. And actually, I, what was her name? Hang on, there was, um, oh, I, her name was Nicole as well. <laughs> yep. Yep, she uh, she owns Safeway Snow, in uh, just uh, I believe in the west suburbs of Chicago, and um, she was uh, just you know you know business was growing and getting bigger and wanted to understand what to expect with this you know when there was this you know if there's a slip and fall and somebody sues you know what's that process look like how's it go we can talk about that but we'll put everybody to sleep I know I know you know what? I so, get a little tired as it is if you would like more information on slip and fall litigation wait and I know this what. To do, <gasps> what Wait. What, Nicole, what do they, how do they find out? What do they, how do they get more information? They email podcast at swinnergroup.com. It's the one. Is it? Is that Swinner Group or Man. is it at something else? No, don't, see, now there you go confusing people. I can't don't do know. that. I thought I knew it. Was that yeah. right? You know, it's, it's podcast at swinnergroup.com. Yay. That's right. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> On that, you know what? You know what? After that nice little plug you just made, you know what we have to do? An ad. Go to commercial break already. Wow. Again. It's flying. So, Molly. Since you're, you're 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 driving this bus, you already picked three. Is it one or two this time? One. Okay, here we go. 
Are you still mixing station gas and oil for your string trimmer, leaf blower, or chainsaw? Eliminate the mess and the guesswork with True Fuel, the original pre-mixed two-cycle fuel. True Fuel is ethanol-free and precision-engineered for small engines, improving performance, and extending the life of your outdoor power equipment. And True Fuel is available for both two- and four-cycle engines. Empower your equipment with True Fuel. Learn more at TrueFuel50.com. You're listening to Turfs Up Radio, the only radio station of its kind dedicated to the green industry. Now you can even ask Alexa to tune you in when you're home. Isn't it nice when the weather cooperates and crews complete jobs on time and on budget? But weather can cause delays, and with paper route sheets, jobs get lost in the shuffle. That's why you need Aspire Crew Control Scheduling Software, an easy-to-use, flexible, and affordable solution that allows you to shift schedules with a single click. Try Aspire Crew Control for free at AspireCrewControl.com. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world, here's to all the women in the green industry. Turfs Up Radio, your industry, your station. Bam! Welcome back, everybody. Great choice. Here we are. Turfs Up Radio. This is it. This is the, this is the genius of Turf Up Radio. We can we can sit here, you know, our little our little group on the seventh floor of the Hilton Hotel in Milwaukee for the Simon Symposium, record a podcast. This is fantastic. And you know what else we can do? We can say that that we've we've reached a level of success. Oh yeah. And, and uh-huh. how do you define a success? So so while we were at the, at the commercial break, we were a little curious. Uh, Molly was you know she couldn't believe that anybody in their right mind would listen to this garbage, right? <laughs> And so, so she can be a little critical. So, as, so it's, it's, it's fine. I mean, she's yeah, maybe she's not wrong, but as she's as, as, so as she's as, as she's refilling her water. What are you drinking, Molly? What do you got? Is that water? Uh, a gin and tonic. Okay, there you go. There you go. So, so she's refilling the gin and tonic. I, I pull up the uh, our little app here to just kind of see you know where we're going because this is uh, what is this? This is episode now nine. That's yeah, show number nine. nine. Show number nine. Yeah, I know, right? Nine shows. So we're 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 nine shows in, and I'm thinking, okay, well, let's 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 see if anybody's listening, right? So I pull up the analytics page, and um, uh, come to find out that we're we're on Spotify, we're on Google Podcasts, we're on Amazon Music, we're on TuneIn, we're on Listen Notes, whatever these things are. Molly's dying Pocket, right now. Pocket <laughs> Casts, I know, right? These are all things like people that are hipping what to do it. Pod Chaser, Deezer, <laughs> Deezer. That's just fun to say. <gasps> you just said it. I mean, I was thinking Weezer, but whatever. <laughs> oh, don't say that. <laughs> and Stitcher and Apple Podcasts and blah, 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 right? So, so we're on all these things. And of all of those things, I, I, I didn't say that to Molly. We were just trying to say whether or not anybody listens, right? And what we come to find out is that there are, in fact, 127 unique downloads so far of the, and we're on only on episode nine, right? And Molly goes, wait, people actually listen to this? Is that what you said? <laughs> word for word, right? Yes. Yes. Nice job. <laughs> Thanks. She was also not happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> well, th- little do you know that, that, that you know, you're, you are now officially a radio personality. Like we're you, you going to put it on your resume. Oh, you know what? So Simon's got, they've got the booth set up where you can get a professional headshot done. There you go. Got to get it done. You got to get it done. You got to make the headshot. We're going to put you on the website that we could sign it and send it out. What? No, 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 you got you to talk into the microphone. Oh, She's gosh. become the center of this conversation. <laughs> she is, she is backing off. supposed to say hello. <laughs> oh, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. So, yeah, 127 people have downloaded something. Now, whether they listen to the whole thing or not, who knows? I'd listen. Sure. I would. We talked about business processes in my snack and chat. God, there you go. Okay, well, I'm, yeah, I'm a downer. I'm not. Or, <laughs> hang on a minute. I'm not done. I'm not done talking oh, about our done, awesome. I'm sorry. No. I thought I'd get it back on no, track. God, no, God. I'll just, just shut up now. Just relax for a second. <laughs> get, track, on, get on track. Get on track. Doing a loop right now. That's, that's right. right. It's coming right. back around. It will Don't come worry. back around. Okay. That's right. So, I'm new to this, man. It's only my first time. Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Everybody's got to cut their feet somewhere. It's fine. Rookie. God, Brent and I have done this nine times. Well, eight times. Eight and a half, to be exact. It's not gotten better. 
all right. It's all right. So, so what's fun is is we can see our top locations, which I'm suspecting are our only locations, given that by location they mean you know country. So we've got um, we've got downloads in the, the the largest one is the United States. Should. Yeah, and then you know what's a little bizarre? Take a guess what the next one is. Canada. Canada. Nope. Jeez. Brazil. Nope. Oh, darn. Brazil is one, two, three, four. The fifth one down. That that what? shouldn't even be possible. There's yeah. is there snow, snow in Brazil. In Brazil? I, you wouldn't the think Andes so. Mountains, but I don't, mountains. I don't think no. Brazil's Brazil goes. No, Brazil goes pretty south. All right. I don't, Poland. No. <laughs> UK. It's no. Oh, tsh, tsh, God. <laughs> Relax for a minute. France. No, it's yes, it's France. <laughs> Did you I read was, that from I, here? No, I was totally trying to just keep naming nope, things. It's France. And then <laughs> the is French. And then is the the, the, the what, Nicole? <laughs> the French. The French? French fries. Her, her glass is <laughs> empty. <laughs> okay, well, clearly we need to get her a you okay, a refill. It was a movie quote. No, I get it, man. It was from Top Gun. No. I know. <sighs> better off dead. Wait, better off dead. Yeah. The mom serving a whole French oh. dinner for yeah, you're right. The girl, French fries, Is that French one of those I dressing. Slept what? Is that one of those I slept through? Oh, come on. The K twelve. Better off yeah, dead. I yeah, nothing. It's really like it's the standing there with the radio and no, it's the no, same no, guy. No, 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 wrong no, no, no. movie. No, this is the I want my two dollars. Yes, yep. two dollars. Nice. So you know it's after after France, then there's the Russian Federation, Fantastic. then Belgium, then Brazil. Please now here's what knock out the Russian Federation. Now, here's what's bizarre. Here's what's bizarre. I can see the pie graph here, right? And the United States has got a big chunk, but the French chunk is probably four times the size of Russia, which is bigger than Belgium and Brazil. Wow. So, like, I'm guessing one one idiot in Brazil started to listen to this crap and went, "I don't know. This doesn't make any sense." But the the other ones have got multiple, you know, multiple downloads. That's kind of yeah. neat. That is interesting. The yeah. Brazilian is our biggest fan, Ken. Come on. The Brazilian? I don't know. Belgium? Yeah, no, there's... What? Where? <sighs> Brazil. Yeah. Yeah. See? I'd like to hear from our Brazilian listeners. <gasps> yeah. Nicole, if, how can our Brazilian listeners get a hold of us? If there's snow, I would like to know. Yeah, tell us. Tell us if there's snow in Brazil at podcast at com. That's beautiful. That was smooth. Is there well like done. a bell... <laughs> there, <laughs> or like a like button. There, oh, you know, subscribe. subscribe, subscribe button coming subscribe. soon. Coming soon. There is. Oh, you know we've got subscribers. I saw that on here somewhere on where that was. I don't know I where that is. Like though. thirty Google accounts recently. Add a boy. That's the way to do it. I'm Thanks, not bud. above it. When I'm, is this bringing it around again? It's not. Okay. It, but it's fun. Someone pulled a nail out of the track and just kind of went. <laughs> It's <laughs> awesome. Okay, so snack and chat. So yeah, so we did snack and chats. That was awesome. Um, the uh, and actually, I got I got one really really good really good idea out of my snack and chat. So so if you're listening, like actually actually pay attention to this one. Like like listen for a second because this was really good. I thought um, for snow when you're doing your preseason walks because everybody does that, and if you don't, well, you need to do that. Um, when you do your preseason walks and you're documenting any existing damage that's on the property, do those walks on a day after it just rained and it rained enough that there are puddles because you can on that property walk identify any low laying areas that are going to hold water. And those areas are going to be the areas that are going to be most likely to be refreeze issues. So you can take photos of those areas, provide that to your customer and say, hey, these are areas that we are making you aware are likely to have refreeze issues. And, um, you know, you can accompany that with a proposal to fix those areas so that they, they you know, shed water properly. Or if, you know, at least you have the documentation that you made the property owner aware that there was a deficiency on the property. So when and if somebody slips and falls there and decides to sue, you'll have that information saved because you're going to do the preseason inspection. You're going to save that information. And you'll be able to fall back on that and provide that to your insurance carrier where you could say, look, I warned them about this, and they elected not to fix it. I thought that was a genius idea. to yeah, do the, do not the, that idea at all. You know, do the inspection on the day it rains. And if you're, you know, if you're in the landscape business and it's a rain day, in the fall, you may not be able to work the next day anyway, and that gives you something to do on that day that uh, will potentially save you tens of thousands of dollars down the line. So that's a, that's a good thing to do. That was the big takeaway I had from my snack and chat. What did you guys get? I had a 
subcontractor management is what I said in it, and uh, that was pretty interesting. Talked to five or six other companies at the table, and while most of them, or actually all of them, you know, performed the majority of their snow on an in-house effort and then did a small amount of subcontracting, and it seemed like they knew that's what they wanted to do, but they there was a lot of unknowns about how to manage that. And how to manage the subcontractors. Yeah, the, you know, some guys are like, yeah, we were just managing them just like our own guys, but then they realized how many more people they suddenly had to talk to and work with and fix problems, and they were just struggling with learning, you know, how the best way to go about that is. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And so it was, uh, I thought it was really, uh, really informative, uh, especially for a lot of the guys that just didn't know anything about using subcontractors other than you made more money because you're doing more work. Yeah, and the... What's in, I know. So our our snow operation is largely subcontracted, and I think that the uh, while you while you do make more money um, in terms of there are more dollars on the table, your margins when you sub work out are painfully low. Right. Yeah. And so I think that's a that's another big surprise to folks as they begin to sub work out is is that there is a uh, um, you know there's a there's a stigma that's around, particularly online, that you know that if you if you're doing work as a subcontractor, somehow there's somebody else that's making just a ton of money off of your work, and and I, I can assure you that that while that <laughs> while it there there was a fellow today that said he was making eighty percent margins on snow that uh, um, got laughed at actually by the entire room, so that was that was kind of fun. So you know, so that that, that was a a sign that that you know how 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 inaccurate that perception is. It's really not good business practice to brag or make an eighty percent profit margin, right? Because one, that's you're either don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> or Fair. two, why would you want your customers to know that? Right, right. <laughs> when that is a well, everyone's margins are vary. They don't vary by 60, 70%. Right. Right. So. Unless maybe he's, you know, I don't know. Maybe he really is making that. That'd, that'd and be then awesome. then I really wouldn't be bragging about it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Well, it, 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 there, was, there was a lot of laughter in the room at that poor soul. So it was fine. But anyways. so Oh, I get it. It was 80% until you figured in cost. That's what it was. Yeah. He just got, hadn't gotten that far. That's what it was. Well, it, see, yeah, they just didn't factor the the subcontractor cost. Well, I get specific. <laughs> That's right. It's fine. <laughs> so, did you have any 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 particular you know really particularly really good takeaways from that from that conversation? Yeah, uh, it was actually kind of surprising to me. Uh, the one thing I heard was one of the contractors who lives in a, a heavier snow market than St. Louis, uh, in order to combat the unpredicted, you know freezing fog or drizzle or light snow that doesn't register on the radar, they would have a couple guys work in the winter nights only. They'd be doing general maintenance or upkeep or fueling or, you know, just, just making sure all the equipment's good to go. So they, they weren't, they weren't just sitting there playing video games. Uh, and, but their main, <laughs> their main priority was to just make sure nothing happened. And if something did happen, let the people know, get them called in and then start getting equipment fired up and, and ready to go so they could jump on it. And they said that they almost never got caught even late after that plan was put into place. That's a cool idea. Did, did they indicate what size company they were? I mean, did they have a, 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 a large enough staff that there would be people that, could, that yeah, they could do that with? Yeah, I didn't get a true feel for the company, but I would wager he had at least 30 or 40 people. Okay. That's a yeah. lot of folks. It is. But, I mean, these are landscaping and snow companies, so they have work year-round and... Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought that was really cool. I, I wasn't expecting to hear something that that neat. And I think the guy even said it was his wife's idea. Well, let's be honest. I mean, the wives come up with the best ideas, right? Sure do. Brownie points. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> oh no, we brought the whole tray of brownies. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> <Keep coming. laughs> all right, all right. So, um, and then Molly, you were in the same room with Brent, right? I was in the same room. Yeah, you were too. For the same table. Uh, oh yeah, I meant same, same table. table. That's right. Oh, she's being funny. <laughs> I get right it. over my head. <laughs> same here. Same here. So, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nicole? My takeaway? What table? What, what, what she's table? in the same room, too. You know what? Hang room. on a second. Oh, my goodness. You know what we're going to have to do? Is it? It's time? We're going to have to do. We're going to talk about your snack and chat table. 
after the break. Oh, cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. Oh, cliffhanger. It better be a good story. Okay, now here's... Wait, here's, can I pick the last commercial? You sure can. <laughs> that you, yeah, yes, you can. We have not done this successfully yet, by the way. What? Oh, no. If when we go out of order? It's yeah. number two. Wait, See? you got to go? What, what? Leave it to the girl. She knows. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> nice, you oh, you. Good work. <laughs> what? The commercial button yeah. number. Number two. Number two. Hit it. El Doso. Two. Creating art from darkness. For over 20 years, Cast Lighting wow. has designed and manufactured the world's most durable, energy efficient, and technically advanced landscape lighting products available at astonishingly affordable prices. Cast offers an all encompassing line of products with everything you need to get the job done. Cast Landscape, their most durable product, is best in class low voltage landscape lighting made of solid bronze with integrated and drop in LED technology. These fixtures are built to endure the most demanding environments. Source Lighting, a new division by Cast, is your source for professional grand landscape lighting lighting made of durable brass offering both integrated and drop-in led technology and backed by cast the world's most durable outdoor lighting cast lighting gives you innovative state-of-the-art old world craftsmanship with tomorrow's technology visit their website at cast-lighting.com today that's cast-lighting.com From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world, no one rocks like Turfs Up Radio. Turfs Up Radio, your industry, your station. Hardworking hands reach for Gemplers for pro-grade landscape tools and gear. Much like our customers, Gemplers is family-owned and independent, which makes it easy to shop online and get your orders shipped quickly from our warehouse straight to your front door. Rather speak to a human? No worries. Gemplers always answers your call. Shop Gemplers for supplies from tools to tree care, safety to sprayers, watering to workwear, and even add your logo for free to show your customers that you're serious. Right now, buy any two pairs of work gloves and get a third pair free. Mix and match, no limit, stock up for spring. Shop Gemplers.com. That's G-E-M-P-L-E-R-S.com. Ah, ah, yeah. Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. The Weekend Review. The Weekend Review. The Weekend Review. Join King Darren and all of your favorite Turfs Up Radio hosts, including ah, Hecubus, ah. Eric, the Turf Teacher Jones, Brian. My name is not Brian. Uh-oh. <laughs> I mean, Ryan Lee, Wayne the Prophet Bowles. One opportunity. His son, we Daniel. Look forward to Green Veteran. Giddy up. And many more. Join us live as we unpack the week and share what you may have missed live on Turf Shop Radio. That's the weekend review, Saturdays, 9 to 10 a.m. Eastern, right here on Turf Shop Radio. Your industry, your station. Yeah! Oh, yeah. With your current software solution, it was bound Field to Routes happen. is the cloud. What just happened? What did went, you do? Same it, thing that happens every episode. Aww. Okay. You know what? He's we, just too excited to talk about the show. And yeah, we can't. Let it play on. Can't afford an engineer, so the, the next commercial just automatically starts playing because I'm the idiot that doesn't turn it off. Uh-huh. Now, you know what? There's probably a way to do that easily, but I don't know how to do it. That's okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Life goes on. It does. It does. And you know what? Do you know what happens when life goes on? Talk about snack and chats. Snack and chat. It's probably the best part of the whole trade show. Wiggity, wiggity, whack. Good food. Good friends. Wait. Good strangers. I don't know. Where are we going? I don't know. Dark room with Jim. With Jim. We talked about that before. <laughs> no, we talked in about an alley. business process processes. Yeah. Basically all the different uh, websites and cloud-based programs and oh. that they have out there for all the different levels from CRM to the snow industry oh. bidding, estimating. What the hell, Brent? Just put that anywhere. Just drop it. You? Just drop it and walk away. Brent just <laughs> yeeted a, a liter of Sprite across the room. Oh it's fine. Well, that's basically how everybody felt about those programs as well. Just drop them and walk away. Yeah. What? Well, yeah. So they they were not they were not particularly thrilled with the software that they're using. They all work to a point, but none of them do exactly what they want, and none of them are snow specific. And but a lot of these people they do landscaping and snow, but but they were telling me that you know maybe it maybe they do need to do a snow only program different from their landscaping program when it comes to the bidding and stuff so if they, huh. could, if they could only find one huh well if so what you're saying is that if there was a a software and management and assistance solution out there specifically for the snow removal industry hmm. that people might be interested in that it seems like it man there was talk of you know wishing that there was an easy way to estimate and had 
you know. So something that would have that would be able to have base metrics for different types of equipment and be able to build estimates, not not that are that are, you know. What? What? I'm just listening. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well maybe maybe this is a good time to maybe say that there may be a solution like that <gasps> on the market soon. Spoilers. Soon it, <gasps> reverb. <laughs> wow. What? You, I mean you, you created the squirrel to chase. Sure did. You want to know more? No. Stay tuned. It's not it's not on the market. You're right. Can't have it. Even if they emailed podcast at swinnergroup.com? Maybe. Maybe if they emailed podcast at swinnergroup.com. So you're hinting at the potential of a program that might be better than all those and Life do all changing. the things that everyone's complaining that others didn't? Maybe. Mm. Maybe. If, 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 I'm, you know what? There's no promises. I've I've heard a couple rumors. Just saying. Wow. Yeah. Exciting. Maybe next year at this very show, folks will be able to know what it is. Maybe. And you know where this very show will be next year? I'm going to guess Hartford, Connecticut. Hartford, nice Connecticut. Work. June 13th to 16th. Good work, Ken. That's right. You know how I know that? I wrote it down. Good job. Smart man. No, I wrote it down. Remember, we just covered that. I, if I was smart, I'd probably just remember it. <laughs> Well, you wrote it down, but I put it on the calendar. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> that that's very very fair. So, yeah. So then, um, so then, yeah. So after the snack and chats, we moved on to another round of seminars, right? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the second round of seminars was better, worse, the same. Oh, I thought that. I thought the second round was good. Yeah, yeah. I really liked mine. Yeah, there you I, go. I mean, Simon was really gutsy with doing the uh, three hours and forty five minute long session. Yeah, that was um, hmm. yeah, that could have that could use a break right in the middle. Yeah, you got a break though, right? We got a short break just because he understood that there's no way he's going to keep everyone's attention for that long. <laughs> it's fair, but and it was it was and, tough. It was tough for him to give a break. He he's a talker. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's a good dude though. Phil Sexton was a guy leading years. Yeah, right? yeah, Phil led it. He he, yeah. he he did a great job, and yeah. I loved his approach to the whole topic, and. uh he basically just had two slides and the, as bullet points and said, "Okay, let's let's discuss this from here." And, yeah, and, and yeah, and he's I mean he's a he's a genuine pro. If anybody's had the uh, the opportunity to work with or or talk to or converse with or even or even just have a conversation to get some advice from Phil Sexton, that dude is he is very good. He is very knowledgeable, and he is he is one of the guys that is very very willing and passionate about being able to help other people. Yeah, it definitely comes across that way. Yeah, he's a really and good. If anybody guy. wants to find a way to get this podcast in front of Phil, that'd be awesome. <laughs> well, I'm, you know what? We could probably email it to him and say, "Hey, bud, here you go." He's probably one of the guy people are already listening. What am I saying? Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Pe- people know him. He, yeah, he's a somebody. We're it a nobody. Definitely is. You know what? We're not a nobody to the 127 people that listen to us, Molly. <laughs> They're out there. It's fine. It's fine. Silence. Yeah. Here we go. Wait, nope, did, that's good. That was the correct use of the crickets. I know. That's why. That's why I used it. It's a little purple button right here. Good job. He even labeled it. Nice. Yep. You know what else? You know what else we have? Rim shot. Aha. Uh-huh. I'm. I'm. I'm staying out of that. <laughs> Fair. So Nicole, what was yours about? Mine was called. Let me pull up my handy dandy uh, Sima app that's on my phone. I can tell you the exact name. It says "Creating Team Efficiency to Improve the Bottom Line" by Jason Cup. You did a great job. This sounds like one of those you get up there on stage and do the trust fall and all that stuff. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Have you ever done a trust fall? No, I don't trust anybody that, <laughs> that much. <laughs> and then they're going to misjudge my weight and I'm still going to hit the ground. Uh-huh. Yeah, they're bad. They are bad, bad, bad. Like, people get hurt doing those things. Yeah. Molly, have you done a trust fall? No. No? Nicole? Uh, probably. I feel like if you got hurt, though, you didn't trust enough. Right? <laughs> Right. Well, no, but Do well, no. That's no. You? you you trusted too much. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh huh. Maybe we should do a trust fall as a team building exercise. We're on the seventh floor. I'm not sure that's a great idea. <laughs> no, not just the four of us. No, like 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 when we get back to the office, like get everybody together. All right, team building. Come on. We can. We, we've got some individuals feathers. at our office that are that are quite hefty, and uh, love it. That'd be interesting. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> All nothing <laughs> nothing I, mean, I, I i think it'd be a good time uh, you know what you, you know you know who would who would uh trust us and fall zach 
Z- no. no. Maybe. No, he would. Zach would. Zach. But okay. you know who you know who would for sure? Dave. Yeah, that's kind of one of the guys I was referring to. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to catch that hairy man. Aww. Well, he, it's, it's only because he's nine feet tall and can squash you with his pinky. Yes, this is true. Yeah. But he would, I mean, he would, he would trust All us. drinking coffee. I would hope so. I would hope Dave would trust us. Oh, yeah. No, Dave's, we've actually talked about Dave in previous podcasts. Oh, yeah? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, Dave's awesome. I don't remember that. Yes. Either, yeah, we were great. talking about, like, that, that one guy on the crew that, oh, that yeah. will always be there. And if you, like, if you needed an arm, he'll just, you know. Everyone's oh. got a Dave. Yeah. Everybody, okay. everybody, need, everybody needs a Dave. Dave's better than Jim. He goes in back, back corners. No. Okay. Oh, not Nicole, our gym. my God. We <laughs> have a gym. our gym. Oh, my Lord. God. I was going back to our joke gym, not okay. the real gym. So while I'm That's not funny. entirely sure if, if, <laughs> if people that work with us listen to this or not, but now Jim, Jim's like, God damn it. <laughs> this is not, not cool. our gym. I was talking about the other gym. I had no oh, idea what you were talking man. about. It's like, it's like a gym that's working out in. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> right. It's like, how is, the gym. what is the matter with you, Nicole? <laughs> God, like, the, 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 okay, this is a time when I wish we could play it back because I'm pretty sure there was a silence where we all kind of looked at each other like, what the hell is she doing right well, now? Well, no, I was trying to stay away from it. <laughs> so. I'm just clueless over here. First you're time, talk, You're talking First about time. ethics gym. Yes. Ethics gym that you met with in a dark room. Yes. Yeah. I forgot. I don't remember no. the joke anymore. But ethics gym in a dark room? No, whatever Nicole was saying. Oh. Was it a joke or was she just... I don't know. I don't know. Where? It's fine. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so your snack and chat was about people that... No, not snack and chat. Not snack we're and past chat. That. That's right, we're past that. We're, past that. we're in the long Okay, I scrolled up. I scrolled up That's okay. to find Hartford and then I hadn't scrolled back down yet. You're so just you... helping me make, make me feel better for messing up earlier. That's fine. It's all good. Yeah. But yeah, okay. no, it was really good. It was about um, leadership... And um, the leaders of leaders. And, the uh, leaders of leaders? Yes. Leaderly how, leaders? Yeah, he wants you to train your leaders in, in leadership management and communication. And uh, to be a leader versus a follower. That's a big fan. I think you'll love that one. Have, have you ever noticed how much leader sounds like leader? Like, like a, take like, me to your leader? Yeah, and a unit of measurement. Ah. I, I was thinking leader of cola. Yes. Which would be the unit of measurement. Yeah, you just yeeted that leader of Sprite. <laughs> Oof, there it went. Well, I was trying to make a very subtle movie reference, and that, since that's your thing. And uh, wait, wait, what? Hang on, a liter of what? A liter of cola. What's that? A liter of cola. It's Super Troopers. Come on, man. Oh, oh I I've seen not it. seen that. <gasps> wait, you've not seen oh. Super Troopers? <laughs> okay, Molly just gasped. She's like, we, holy. We she's knew like, a reference. She's like, oh <laughs> my god. One hundred and twenty-seven people even... listened to this, and he's never seen Super Troopers. Actually, I I don't know the reference, but you made one that they didn't know. That's this true. This is true. Okay, well we got to watch Super Troopers. Not seen this movie. I, I, How am I, I not in this movie? Right? Okay, there's the, the the Nick Cage movie about playing Nick Cage. That's got to be great. I, yeah. Ah, really? It's got to it be looks great. Good. It looks desperate. No, uh, it looks funny. I you think know, it's supposed I think to look desperate. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be that way. But I think it is. It's not just a portrayal. <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> Talk okay. to me after you've seen it. That's fair. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Whew, come back when you have real information. That's right. <laughs> okay, so leaderly leaders and lead by example. and, and Yes. Yeah. Yes, it says, he gave us a couple quotes. He said, the people who are doing the work are the moving force behind our product. My job is to create a space for them to clear out the rest of the organization and keep it at bay. Steve Jobs said that. Did he? Apparently so. Who's Steve Jobs? How's he doing today? Well, he was head of Macworld, according to this. Head of Macworld? (laughs) That's what it says. Steve Jobs, comma, Macworld. Like Mac HQ? Oh, okay. Kind of a... Smart, wealthy guy. He's done. He, yeah, he did pretty well for himself. Yep. Did. Yep. The other little quote here says, our most successful clients we work with have amazing people who deliver an amazing product via efficient processes, which deliver a huge profit. Ooh. Yep. The huge is, profit. Yeah, and he really honed in on that whole processes thing. Well, it sounds good. Yeah. Good processes being efficient with, you know, software and stuff and, yeah. and consultation and stuff. Man, if only there was somebody that combined those. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh. oh, that was good. Pay attention, folks. Oh, yeah. Well, you t- Molly, just turn the mic on. Well, I just wanted to know what the other button sounded like. Oh, okay. You hit most all of them now. Yes, yeah, so we got the crickets. Oh, you, oh, you. God, you know what? We got to go. 
I can't hardly be. We're, yeah, we're out of time. I was actually starting so, to like this. Oh, well, we're going to do another one right now. <laughs> part like, two. Part coming two. Up. It's coming up. Yeah. It's going to be great. <laughs> she was this semi-relieved. <laughs> <laughs> She's totally being nice. <laughs> oh, my God. So we've been kind of talking winter is winter from uh, the 25th Annual Snow and Ice Management Association Conference here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, you've got, uh, well, the Bogomans, Ken and Nicole, the Readers, Brent and Molly up here representing Swinter Group in Milwaukee for the Simon Conference. This has been fantastic. Thanks for listening. Um, we're going to, well, we're going to just do another one here. So I don't, they're not going to air them back to back on Turfs Up, but uh, listen Tuesdays and Thursdays, I believe, 10 a.m., Turfs Up Radio. Yeah. Goodbye. Are you still mixing station God gas and oil okay. for your string you know what? I'm like the <laughs> or chainsaw? Screw it. Eliminate the mess and the guesswork. The ad's playing. Fuel, the original we got an ad going. It's fine. We're just going to roll fuel. the episode. Fuel I'm keeping it. Ethanol free. I'm not I know that guy's voice. Engineered for small We've already played it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but I'm going to turn it down. We're going to talk over the ad. Yeah, This is fine. What? Yeah, we're still recording. See the little red, the big red button there? It says REC. It's red. Yeah, we're going to let this go. You know why? Because I meant for this ad to play. Learn more at truefuel50.com. There it is, True Fuel 50, truefuel50.com. Say that three times fast. Nope, not doing it. Talking winter with Swinter, Turf Up Radio. Have a nice day. Bye.